What's the difference between bone strength and bone quality? Did you know that a DEXA scan only measures the outer layer of your bones? It does, and it doesn't let you know anything about the inner part of your bone. This leaves us with the really important question of what's going on with the inside part of our bones? And do we have high quality bones or not? Hello, my friends. I'm Sarah, and I'm a nutritional health coach through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. I'm also a 500-hour trained yoga teacher with additional training that's specific to osteoporosis and yoga. I'm also a BoneFit certified fitness instructor, and I'm on a mission to reduce the number of osteoporotic fractures that happen each year. I'm glad to have you join me in the journey to better bone health. Today we'll be discussing what the difference is between bone density and having high quality bones. To understand the difference, we need to first have a brief discussion about medication for bone health. There are two basic groups of medication that are designed to improve bone health. There are medications that are designed to stop bone from being broken down, and then there are medications that are designed to stimulate new bone growth. Today, we'll be focusing on the section that stops bone from being broken down. So let's go over what happens in our bodies when a person takes a medication that slows or stops bone from being broken down. At first glance, stopping bone from being broken down sounds great. It's like making a money deposit at the bank and then leaving it to grow. Or is it? Our bones, like the rest of our bodies, have cells that are replaced all throughout our lives. This is actually how we get a new skeleton every seven to 10 years. It happens a few cells at a time every day of our lives. This means that eventually we have cells that get old and need to be replaced. The natural mechanism of our bodies is to sweep away the old worn out cells and then to replace them with new healthy cells that are strong and ready to do their job. Medications that are designed to stop bone from being broken down interfere with this process. Sometimes this is a good thing and sometimes it's not a good thing. This is because things happen in our bodies that disrupt the balance between the amount of bone that's being built and the amount of bone that's being broken down or swept away. For many people, their bodies break down good bone that shouldn't be broken down. This is where the balance is off. Medication in these instances can be incredibly helpful for getting our bodies back on track and in the right balance. In my opinion, this is actually the best way to make use of medication that stops bone from being broken down. And in these instances, the medication is used as a short-term stopgap, maybe for a year or two. This type of medication can become a real problem when it's used for years on end without any other intervention or end in sight. The reason why it can become such a problem is that over years, old bone that should have been broken down isn't broken down. This leads to having thicker bones that show up on a DEXA scan, but they aren't necessarily high quality bones. Instead, it's possible that a person has sheets of dead cells that are still part of their bones. This means that while things appear better on a DEXA scan, a person's bones are actually brittle and weak and still at a high risk for having fractures. There are even instances that modern medicine refers to as having a spontaneous fracture. And these are the result of having thick, dense bones that aren't high quality. So this is an example of the difference between having dense bones and having high quality bones. The best situation with bone health is one where a person is able to have both good bone quality and bone density. But if you can't have both, it's better to have bone quality because that actually helps to reduce the risk of having fractures, where bone density doesn't necessarily, as you can see with the potential for having sheets of old dead cells that should have been broken down and replaced. In general, bone quality is created through lifestyle choices. This is true whether a person chooses to take medication for bone health or not. So lifestyle choices include doing consistent, regular weight-bearing exercise and eating in a way 
that provides our bodies with nutrients that help us to build our bones and our bodies in a healthy way. The first and most important part of improving our bone quality is giving our bodies the nutrients that they need to build strong, healthy bones. Our bodies have to have the right nutritional building blocks to build bone. This means getting both the vitamins and minerals that our bodies need, along with getting enough protein. Our bones are made up of a lot more than just calcium. We tend to think of our muscles as being made of protein, but did you know that our bones are actually mostly made of protein? This means that we need to eat nutrient dense foods that will help our bodies to build strong muscles and strong bones. Our bones also need vitamin C. Vitamin C is used to build both collagen and as part of the lattice structure of our bones itself. We need to consume foods that have vitamin C in them every day. When you're trying hard to build your bones, a bit of extra vitamin C is also incredibly beneficial for our bones. This is extra beyond the amount that's in the daily recommendations. Okay, so once our bones have the nutritional building blocks that they need, then we have to do regular weight bearing exercise that will increase our muscle mass. Strong muscles pull on our bones, which say to our bodies, hey, I'm using that, so you better reinforce it. Having strong muscles pull on our bones is actually what stimulates new bone growth. This is an incredibly powerful thing that you can use to leverage and improve your bone quality and your bone density, whether you choose to take medication or not. This doesn't mean that you necessarily have to go to the gym and lift heavy. If you like going to the gym and lifting heavy, then by all means, that is amazing. Do your thing, have at it. It will help you to build bone quickly. This isn't necessarily possible for many people who have bone loss. Utilizing other forms of strength training, such as hand weights and resistance bands at home, along with doing yoga or Pilates that have been specifically designed for building strength and improving bone health. These might take longer to build bone than lifting heavy at the gym, but it will improve your bone quality over time and reduce your fracture risk. And that, in my opinion, is totally worth it. And by the way, any fitness program that's been designed with bone health in mind should include strength training in one form or another. It should also include balance training and help to improve posture long-term. And a bit of flexibility goes a long way towards being able to bend at the hip without rounding your spine. I think another really important part of improving bone health is working with a medical provider that really understands bone health and doesn't just leave you on a medication indefinitely without a plan. We need to be partners with our medical providers. Ask your medical provider what the long-term plan is and how they suggest that you build and maintain your bone quality. Maybe this means that they provide you with an ongoing referral to a really good physical therapist. Hopefully they have a plan rolled up their sleeve. If not, keep asking what the plan is until you get one from them or look for another doctor who will help you to create a plan that will support you in your bone health goals. Bone quality is essential for having better bone health. We need to have strong, healthy bones more than we need to just have thick bones. I encourage you to take some time today and make a plan that includes one thing that you'll do to improve your bone quality over time. And if you're comfortable, I would love hearing about what you're going to do and share that with me in the comments. If you found this video learning about the difference between bone density and bone quality helpful, please share it with someone that you know and love. And on that note, I look forward to talking with you soon.